A few weeks back, I was lucky enough to get hold of a Trek Fuel EXE 9.7 electric lightweight mountain bike from Leisure Lakes in Berry. The bike itself was awesome. It's a lightweight trail bike with 150mm Fox suspension up front and 140mm uh, suspension out the back. It's got the Shimano drivetrain on there, but it does have SRAM brakes and SRAM rotors with 200mm rotor at the front, two, three out the back. It's got the XT re rear mech. It's also got a 51 tooth cassette out the back and it's got the SLX shifters and it's also got a 34 tooth cog up front. The motor side of it, it's a TQ motor. It's quite a lightweight motor. This one's 50 Newton meters in power and that's accompanied with a 360 watt battery. You can actually remove the battery from this bike and you can slide it out the bottom of the frame even without turning the bike upside down, which is a handy um, aspect if you wanted to charge it somewhere where the bike's not being kept. So that's an, a nifty little feature. You've also got the really easy to use hand control on the handlebars with just a switch up and down, which links to the two inch OLED screen in the top tube. This is really, really neat. The only thing I found about this is when it's raining, it did collect a little bit of water in the minute, but you can take that bit out, clean it, and put it back in. You can see the spec here. It's a decent spec for the money. I would say the highlights of this were the suspension works fine. You know, I had no qualms that. The only thing I did find, if you had a big, heavy flat landing or something, it, it doesn't seem to um, mellow out the travel at the top. Maybe a few tokens in there would sort that out. Uh, there was a few instances where a flat landed a drop and just went straight through the travel. And if you've ever done it, there's a really horrible donk noise as you hit the top of the fork, the travel stroke. That was on the front, the rear, there was no problems really with that one. The tires on this bike were Bontrager XR5 Team Issue 2.5 inch front and back. And I must say, I was really, really impressed with these. I rode them in wet rock, wet mud, dry mud, dry rock and dry mud and they never failed and they came really predictable really quickly which makes a good tire when you can know if it's going to skid or not. It, they were really good. I would consider actually buying some of these for my own bike, so highly recommend on there. The finishing kit, pretty much all Bontrager. Really nice 780mm bars. It's got its own Transex dropper. Uh, again, everything was comfortable. Nice set in there. Angles wise for this bike, it's quite slack at 65 up front uh, for the head tube angle. In terms of descending, it was just like a normal bike. You didn't really feel the weight. It was very nimble, really playful. All the angles and the geometry just fitted really nicely. And I didn't have any trouble getting it down. Tight stuff, quick switch of direction the other thing i found about this bike it was kind of two bikes when i took it it was in the default mode for the power and cadence pickup and all that kind of thing and then i did find it hard work that you really had to work yourself hard to get something out of it so you had to and i did about two laps of land Egler and i had one percent back though that gives you an idea of how, how how long the battery lasts i did do the beginning bit on turbo to be fair but also i noticed when i switched the mode up to a bit more um high performance settings using in the app the, the battery did drain quicker but it also was colder where that's got the motor itself 50 newton meters it is enough if you're a fit person you just want it to get up to the top of the climb quick to just do some descents and stuff and you want a little bit of assistance just to make it faster but you're still willing to put the effort in then it is good if you just want to do an all-day cross-country ride and you want the battery and the motor to just do everything for you, it's not the bike for you. Other highlight features, the crank, 165mm cranks. Do I did noticeably feel that they were shorter, but I never hit them on anything, so that was good. Even when I went through all the travel, there was no, there was enough clearance off the floor. The motor was super quiet. It's probably the quietest e-bike I've ever ridden, even when you're giving it turbo and spinning as fast as you can. So riding the bike with no motor on, really easy. There's hardly any drag. Beautiful, just like a normal bike. And then if we turn the motor on, that's one bar. Can you hear it? Let's put some more cadence through it. Nope, can't hear it. Beautifully. There is a noise, it's just not very loud. The weight of the bike being 19 kilograms with pedals on thereabouts, I think it's claimed that it's 18 and a half without pedals. Lifting it over gates, lifted it over gates all day long, wasn't really a problem. You don't need a friend to, to get it over. Is it light enough to chuck over gate? Easy. No problems. My overall opinion of this bike is, would I buy one? Mm. If it was a bit cheaper, I'd probably buy one, but for me, the Orbea Rise is still the bike for me with that 10 extra newton meters. Um, and coincidentally, actually, you can buy a range extender for the Trek, which is about 450 pounds currently, which will give you uh, extra range if you are wanting to go and pedal out a bit further, a bit longer. Uh, it just reminded me that because you can get one for the Rise as well. If you've got one of these bikes, let me know what you think. If you're thinking about getting one of these bikes in the comments below. Thanks for watching.